Hunting terrorism, as you put it. How realistic might that pledge be? Let's go live to North London. Geoffrey Robinson, human rights and barrister, regular contributor here, joins us, as you see. Geoffrey, welcome to you. Um, what do you make of this, this pledge, such as it is? Well, it's a U-turn, because only 20 days ago, the Conservative manifesto promised not to scrap the Human Rights Act, and now Mrs May is threatening to rip it up. Well, the Act itself allows itself to be ripped up, but only if there is a public emergency threatening the life of the nation. And if you look at Manchester on Sunday night, if you look at London Bridge today, you see the re resilience of the people of this country and their determination not to be cowered by terrorism. So I don't think it's a very good idea to give in to the terrorists by ripping up the civilized standards by which we live. What Mrs. May has to face is the fact that her cuts as Home Secretary took 20,000 police off the street. But that isn't so important. What happened was that those 20,000, the cuts, fell mainly on community police officers. And that was the tragedy, because unless we have sufficient community police to link up with the Muslim community and with voices like that of the mother of the killer that we've just heard, uh, that is what we rely upon to identify those yeah. who make that sudden disastrous jump from interest or theoretical support for ISIS into going about and uh, butchering and killing people. Je Jeffrey Robinson, we don't, we don't get, want to get too heavily into uh, police tactics. That's been well ventilated over the last uh, couple of days or thereabouts. But on the no. specific point she raises, there, is, there has been public frustration out there. You can say it's anger that's been fanned uh, by newspapers all the rest of it. Nonetheless, there does seem to be a, a body of the public who have serious misgivings when somebody that the state wants to deport uh, finds that they can't do so because their right to a family life seems to be getting in the way. Yeah. Well, that's a problem, and it's a particular problem with criminals, not with terrorists. It's much easier to deport terrorists unless, and this was the case of Abu Qatada, unless they're going to be tortured where you send them. You can't send them to a place where they're being tortured or where they're going to be killed. But terrorists, it's not difficult to deport. We have a lot of existing powers that simply aren't being used. I mean, my worry is that we've got 450 returnees from ISIS where they've been engaged in a genocidal campaign butchering Christians and Yazidis, and none of them are being prosecuted. They should be prosecuted for genocide, crimes against humanity, murder, uh, and yet they're going back into their communities and able to break out we have control orders called unpronounceably TIPMs, and uh, mm. how many of these hundreds, if not thousands, of, of uh, terrorists are subject to them? Seven. Mm. Seven. Yeah. Uh, of course, they enable the uh, security services to monitor their every yeah. movement and, and, and their you know, every and you know how the argument runs, don't and you, the on TIPMs? Things. Yeah, but you, you know how the argument runs on TIPMs. The argument runs that... Uh, the Tories in coalition were effectively compelled to drop control orders by the Liberal Democrat coalition partners who had serious misgivings about the human yeah. rights aspect of them. But the, they are a form of control order and they're simply not being used. And we hear about, oh, we've foiled five plots. Where are the plotters? They're never brought to court. Yeah. And this is interesting because Britain, unlike most other countries, unlike America, never uses elect secretly obtained electronic evidence, telephone taps, and so forth. We have evidence of guilt of dozens of plotters, and they're never brought to court because we have this absurd, in my view, obsession with secrecy and not using that evidence. I think we have to have a serious debate about changing our policy in order to prosecute people who are actually guilty of conspiring to cause terrorist atrocities. So there are areas where the Human Rights Act is not relevant. It's really something that ensures fairness of procedures. We have enough laws, uh, and I mean Mrs. May talks about 
heavier sentence. If we do, if we catch anyone and convict them for terrorism, they go to prison for life, but uh, or 25 years. So it's not really that. You could imagine really tough measures: internment, bring back internment, exile. We have the, the wonderful old idea centuries ago of sending people on exile. We could exile suspects to the Falkland Islands. But what would happen then would be that the information that we so desperately need and the support we so desperately need from Muslim communities would dry up. So it's a very careful balance. And at the moment, we have plenty of laws, but we simply don't use them. And one problem is we don't prosecute the returnees from, from uh, their genocidal support for ISIS, and we don't use Kippens sufficiently, and we don't, we have evidence against dozens of people, but we don't use it because of this uh, absurd self-denying audience, uh, or ordinance, that we don't use secretly obtained evidence in court. That's what we should look at, not uh, repealing the Human Rights Act or whatever. Jeffrey Robinson, got to leave it there. Appreciate your time. Thanks very much indeed.